flow. Uh, managing a dynamic distributed system is a tough task. It became even harder for me when we moved to microservices architecture, because the number of moving parts grew a lot. I thought that if we work with containers and have the application already split into microservices, the next step would be to add an orchestrator to dynamically and autonomously manage them. So I went to the Cloud Native conference to learn about technologies in this area. I saw the Cloud Native landscape with tons of useful technologies, but I didn't learn what this Cloud Native is really about. Then I started to dig into how different people explain and describe it. I found several different definitions and different points of view, and that these definitions are still evolving. But for me, the first question to answer was, why should I actually care? What benefits can we get from this approach? And if it's any good, how can I sell it to my boss? So the case studies available from the companies that adopted cloud native approach already. Among them are the Financial Times and Zalando and unicorns like Netflix have used similar methods for years. And they can increase reliability by managing their applications and infrastructure with an autonomous system that reacts to failures of components without human intervention required. And at the same time, they increase the velocity of delivering features to customers. So having a self-service platform managed by software enables them to deploy changes faster by orders of magnitude. And this is how Netflix sees the relation between those two. So increasing the rate of change results in lower availability. And to improve both, you need changes in technology and architecture. And they also put less work into the mundane management of growing infrastructure. So now all routine decisions are made by the platform. And also the infrastructure costs can go down with better utilization. So the next question for me was, how can I implement this cloud native approach to building and running applications? And among the different methods I found, there are the three that are most often advised. And first of them is to split, so to build your applications into containers. So it gives you the great benefit of standardization. It lets you standardize on a single package format, one way to deploy, and one way to control the application. Second is to manage those applications with an autonomous orchestrator. So a human needs only to describe the desired state of the whole cluster, and then the app lifecycle is taken care of by software. And the third one is to break down the application into microservices that are small, single purpose, and decoupled. And you benefit from them being easier to develop and update, and cheaper to operate. So, okay, this cloud native seems to be, to be a technological paradigm that prescribes those three patterns, container packaged applications, dynamically managed, and microservices architecture. And when I've tried to find how people define cloud native, I most liked what Justin Garrison and Chris Nova said in their book, Cloud Native Infrastructure, which I really recommend. So it's about infrastructure that is hidden behind useful abstractions. So you no longer deal with individual machines, but have an API to control the whole cluster. Also, this infrastructure is managed by software. So there is this autonomous orchestrator that constantly makes sure that the cluster is in the desired state. And also, applications are designed to be managed by software, not by humans. So we no longer produce operational documentation, 
but we rather make sure that we have standardized app interfaces. I am Tomasz Tarczyński, I work at Gigaset, and thank you very much for listening.